Hi, I'm Michael Hellickson. Have you ever played that game as a child where you tell someone a story and they tell someone and then they tell someone and it goes through several people before it comes back to you and by the time it comes back to you, it's so convoluted it's a completely different story? Well, you know, that's happened in my life recently with regards to some events that happened in our real estate business and, and the situations surrounding us getting out of the real estate business. And so I wanted to create this website to kind of shed some light on the truth, help you guys understand exactly what happened uh, and why, and more importantly, how you can avoid have something, having something like, like this happen in your real estate business. So in 2007, we caught the state of Washington Department of Licensing breaking the law. Uh, unfortunately, they were performing random audits of real estate agents and they came knocking on my door one day and we'd done these audits before, it was no big deal. We'd always come through with flying colors. In fact, they would laugh and say, you know, you should be teaching classes on how to do real estate because your, your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted and you're doing a great job of it. And, uh, and then we'd laugh because I do teach classes on it and at the time I taught classes on it. Uh, that being said, when they came knocking on my, do my door one day, I happened to be in Dallas visiting one of my clients, Fannie Mae, and actually a couple others as well, Nation Star and some other clients. And uh, so when they call came knocking on our door, my assistant called me up, said, hey, Michael, the state's here. They want to do this audit. And so I called my attorney up and I said, hey, Doug, could you go do this audit for me? And he said, no, I can't do it. I'm in court for another client. Just tell him to go away. And I said, well, I can't tell him to go away. It's the state. He says, oh, no, 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 they know that it's not illegal. They're, they're doing something wrong. They know it. Uh, we've talked about it before. So just tell him to go away. So I thought to myself, well, he's my attorney, and he's a smart guy, so I better follow his lead. And so I had my assistant let them know that I was out of town, and would they be okay just coming back in a couple of weeks when I got back into town? She told them this. They went away. Well, the next day, they came back with a subpoena. And so I called my attorney up again. I said, Doug, now what do I do? They came back with a subpoena. And he says, hey, no problem, just authorize me $1,500, I'll take care of it, and uh, you won't have any problems. Okay, no big deal. So I authorized him $1,500. He takes him to court the next day. And he gets a court order, a restraining order, saying that not only can they not do this to me, they can never do this to any agent in the state of Washington ever again. Here's the sad part. Not only did they not follow that court order, they never followed it. To this day, they have not followed that court order that still exists, by the way. Uh, instead, they decided that following Monday that they would hire a full-time investigator to track down ways to get me and my wife and our team out of the real estate business. They did this for 17 months. For 17, actually 17 and a half months, they contacted every one of our clients that they could find, the clients, buyers, sellers, uh, the, the other agent on the other side of the transaction, uh, their client, uh, title, escrow, mortgage, everybody they could reach, they contacted. And they would send them a complaint on state letterhead and say, hey, we have a complaint against Michael Hellickson. Would you be willing to sign it? They did this with literally thousands of our clients and other people. Out of the thousands of people that they sent these letters to, they got 19 people to send one back. I'm sorry, 23 people to send one back. Of those 23 people, 19 of them were competitors, most of which were from one real estate company in particular who happened to be the biggest company in the area at the time. And they actually sent an email out to all their people in, to, in their entire company saying, hey, this is our chance to get our biggest competitor out of business. Please sign one of these complaints and send it into the state. Uh, the other four people were all short sale sellers, uh, so mom and pop selling their homes on a short sale, and they, were all had, they all had the same complaint, which was that I couldn't get their deficiency judgment waived, which as you know, as a real estate agent, is completely beyond our control. So at the time, again, I had an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, never, ever, ever been sued by a client, not once, uh, and had great relationships with our clients. Uh, that being said, not a legitimate complaint in the bunch. So they send us a letter and they said, you know, this is uh, April of 2010-ish. They send us a letter and they said, hey, if we need anything, we'll let you know. And my attorney and I talked about it and he says, hey, you know, there's nothing to worry about. You're doing everything right. And he knew our business inside and out. So he knew that we were doing a good job. And, and he happened to actually be the attorney that wrote the law of real estate agency in Washington state, which is a brochure that has to be uh, by law handed to every buyer and seller when you do business with them in Washington state. All right, so fast forward to August of 2010. 
in August of 2010, we moved our offices out of my home, believe it or not. I had 44 people working out of my home. I know, crazy, right? It's a big house, but, you know, and we had, you know, detached buildings and all this with them working it. But at, at the end of the day, it was insane. It was time to move to an office. And so we did. We moved down to an office in Sumner. And every time you move your physical location, it triggers one of these random audits. And so, again, they came by to do one of these audits, which, by the way, they're not supposed to do. There's a court order, a restraining order against the state prohibiting them from doing these audits. But they came knocking on our door again. So I called Doug up and he says, Michael, you absolutely have to take them to court now because if you don't, you're complicit. And that means your court order, that restraining order, will go away and the state will have free range to do this to you and to other agents going forward. All right, so I'm thinking to myself, all right, right now I'm the biggest agent in the country. It's probably wise for me, you know, I'm probably in the, the, the person best suited. I'm in the best position to fight this battle on the behalf of the other agents as well as myself. Uh, and frankly, the state was doing something wrong. And so uh, for idealistic reasons, I decided, well, I'm going to go ahead and follow Doug's advice and I'm going to take him to court and I'm going to enforce that restraining order against the state. So in the process of, of scheduling the hearing, he's talking with their attorneys and they're all, you know, they're talking with the court and they're figuring out when we're going to have the hearing to, to enforce this court order. And so they knew he was going to be gone for a week and a half over Labor Day weekend. They knew I was going to be gone to Hawaii with my family for two weeks over Labor Day weekend. And so rather than fight us in court where they lost before and they knew they were going to lose again, they decide at five o'clock in the afternoon in a complete surprise attack, uh, they decide to literally hit send on an email that suspends my real estate license. No warning, no, hey, we think you're doing this, this, and this wrong, nothing. They just literally suspend my real estate license. At the time, I had about 750 listings, about 400 and, uh, excuse me, about $4.5 million in commissions uh, getting set to close. I had uh, 44 employees um, and just loads and loads of good people that had their homes listed with us, that worked with us, uh, who were all, were all hurt by this. And unfortunately, I couldn't even talk to any of my clients, couldn't call anybody, couldn't say, hey, this is what's going on, because if I did, I'd be practicing real estate without a license, and that would give the state a real reason to come after me. Well, it took me 30 days to get back into court. When we finally got back into court, the judge was very clear. He said his exact words were, this is clearly retaliatory behavior on the state's part. And he told the state, not only do you have to give Michael and Tara and their real estate company their licenses back, but you need to leave them alone. And you need to stop doing these random audits that according to this restraining order they were not supposed to be doing. They said, you need to stop doing these audits. I'll tell you again, even to this day, they're still doing them. They've never complied with the law because there's no accountability. You can't find the people at the state. You're not going to throw them in jail. There's no consequences for them. So they continue to violate that law and that uh, restraining order to this day. Well, the judge forced them to give us our licenses back and again told them, leave, leave us alone because they'd violated our civil rights in three different ways and all kinds of other stuff. And anyway, they give us our licenses back. In the meantime, Fannie Mae and Bank of America, uh, who obviously looked into this because, you know, their number one agent nationwide was, uh, and had just lost their license. I'd want to know what was going on. And so they came back and Bank of America said, hey, we love what you're doing. Here's 60 listings to get you back on your feet. Fannie Mae came back and said, hey, we really love what you're doing. Here's 125 listings to get you back on your feet. And oh, by the way, we want you to start teaching classes to all of our other agents around the country and show them how you're doing what it is you do. Well, that was all great and that was nice. I, you know, and I got some other clients came back and they uh, started listing homes with us. And before long, we were back on top in the state again. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people lost their homes in that interim, in that 30-day period. A lot, of, a lot of bad things happened to a lot of people because of what the state did that were completely beyond our control and we had no way of fixing. Uh, that being said, the state decided they were going to continue to come after me. We'd blacken their eye. Essentially, when I took them to court and got that restraining order, it was like jumping up and down on a hornet's nest. And they were going to sting me. They were going to find a way to sting me. And so they kept coming after me and kept coming after me. And uh, they actually decided to put me through this bogus administrative process, which essentially is a state employee, someone who works for the Department of Licensing, acting like a judge. Uh, and so it, it's not even a, 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 an unbiased process. This is not an elected official uh, going through this process. It cost me $356,000 to fight them in this process, which I paid. 
And we got to the end of the process, and even the court reporter said to my attorney, she says, there's no way you guys lose. They have absolutely no case. You guys have the strongest case I could ever have imagined, and uh, there's no way you lose this. And, and that's not something a court reporter would normally ever say. They're supposed to be unbiased. Normally, they don't say a word. In this case, she, she spilled the beans and said, there's no possible way that, that this goes any way but your way. And uh, unfortunately, they sided again that, you know, the, the administrative uh, employee of the state sided with their boss, essentially, and rubber stamped them. And so now we had to go back to a real judge. And so we uh, took it to the Court of Appeals, and the Court of Appeals, within two weeks, which is very fast, by the way, within two weeks said, yep, we're absolutely going to hear this case. Uh, this has clearly been tried improperly. And I asked my attorney, I said, what do you think it's going to cost me to get uh, through this process? And and he says, well, first of all, there's no way you lose. And he says, second of all, it's going to cost you probably another twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 uh, know, on the low end. Could cost a little bit more. Uh, but then we had the heart to heart that they're never going to stop coming after us. They decided they were going to run us out of business. In fact, they went on TV and they said, we're going to make it our mission in life to ensure that Michael Hellickson never practices real estate in the state of Washington again. And so uh, I looked at Tara and my wife uh, and I just said, sweetheart, this is never going to stop. They're going to continue to come after us. They're never, ever, ever going to give up. And they have an unlimited budget, which we don't. At some point, they will bankrupt us. And so right now, I just feel like we're throwing good money after bad. So we have a couple of choices. We can move to another state and sell real estate there. We can continue to fight this battle with the state of Washington. Or we can just simply decide to go focus on our coaching business, which we had been doing since 2001, which is you know helping other agents learn to run their businesses more efficiently so they can make more money in less time, that sort of thing. And we both agreed that it was time to move on. So I called Doug up and I said, Doug, let him have it. Let, let him have my license. We're done. We're just, we can't do this anymore. And Doug asked me, he actually said, Michael, you know, if you'd authorize me just another $1,500, there's a couple of things that I need to tidy up to ensure that the case law is nice and solid to protect real estate agents going forward. Uh, there was nothing in it for me at this point. I was not going to be a real estate agent anymore. Um, but I said, okay, that's fine. I, I get it. You know, we've spent, we've spent this much money already and we've, we've gone this far. At the very least, we can leave a little bit tidier trail for future agents if they ever have to fight with the state. And so we did. We, we spent a little bit extra money and, and he cleaned that up. But essentially, what, what, I want, what I want to convey here is that number one, we didn't break any laws. We were never even accused of breaking any laws. Um, in fact, um, we, the, the, the entire reason why they suspended our real estate licenses had zero to do with anything we had done other than that we took them to court and we got that initial restraining order preventing them from doing these illegal searches and seizures that they'd been doing all these years, um, which again, to this day, they're still doing. So I hope that clarifies a little bit about kind of the process we went through. And I hope that um, the lesson that, that I take from this, and I hope that the lesson that you'll take from this is sometimes Fighting a battle just because, uh, for idealistic reasons may not be the right move. From a business standpoint, if I had to do over again from a business standpoint, taking them to court and getting that restraining order was a major mistake. Uh, furthermore, treating everyone like clients in your marketplace, not just your actual clients, but treating the other agents in your marketplace like clients is massively important. First of all, it's the right thing to do. Second of all, had we done that all those years, and there was a period of time where we were growing very quickly and our, and our growth outpaced our ability to staff up and really, um, really provide the level of customer service to the agents in the marketplace that we needed to. Well, let me tell you, that created a mob mentality, and it made us public enemy number one with a lot of agents, and, and it's something that we never fully recovered from uh, in our area. And so it's, I would recommend that you have a client, you know, an agent outreach program and that you make sure that you're taking very, very good care of the agents in your marketplace. Anyway, that being said, I, you know, if you have any questions, if, if you want to, you know, find out more about what really happened, please reach out to me. Uh, I hope you never have to go through what we went through. And I hope that this brings a little bit of clarity to the situation. So have a terrific day. And seriously, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I know that you're busy and, um, you know, I, I hope again that this has been helpful to you. Again, my name is Michael Hellickson. Have a fantastic day.